The shifting justifications for the shutdown are not limited to what we have seen in the revised downward numbers in the estimates for the death counts due to COVID-19. Of course, we remember now, if you look on the internet, but though you cannot find very easily in the news archives that yes, they used to say, just think back, remember just a month or two ago, two million dead. They've given up on that. The entire, that number out, two million dead Americans, remember? And it was supposed to be hundreds of thousands of, of, of Brits by the same model. And then, oh, whoops, we, we forgot to carry the three. It's, uh, oh, no, it's it's not what we said it was going to be for the death counts. It's uh, uh, maybe, uh, what is it now? 80 to 90,000 we're hearing from Trump as, as the latest numbers. Uh, oh, oh, my God, they might go up. And now we're tracking. They've got you focus on, oh, my gosh, it might go up from 80,000 to 92,000. And, and it's like, yeah, that's that's a tragedy. I, I, I certainly would not mean to discount the significance of the lives behind those numbers. And yet, how did we get to the point where we were paying this much attention to this crisis in the first place? If they had come out and started giving us these numbers, it would have been obvious from the beginning. This is a virus that is less deadly than the flu. That is what they are telling us now. But no, don't have that perspective because remember when this got introduced, two million could die. And now the shifting justification has gone from flatten the curve to find the cure. We have to get the vaccine at least. We couldn't possibly open up until we have nerfed the world and you can leave your home without a the possibility of contracting a disease that has a one in 1,000 something chance of killing less if you're under age 60, whatever it is, obscenely low. We have to nerf the world. Now, like Oklahoma, we see, we see lawmakers all over the country going, well, you know, until we can vaccinate everybody and have uh, tracking for contact and exposure and who's been tested and who hasn't, well, then we need more control. We need to set up checkpoints. And if you don't have uh, a bracelet that says that you've tested negative and you haven't been around anybody who's been exposed, well, then you can't come into our... I mean, like that's what's being discussed in LA. It's it's being proposed. Hey, we can't lift any of the, the lockdown measures until they have the cure. This is insane. I mean, there's so many obvious reasons. But if this doesn't expose to you, what, what, what a racket this whole thing is. And calling it the hoax, as it should be, is, is not to talk about the virus. The virus is not the crisis. The crisis we're experiencing now is the forced unemployment crisis. It is, it is clear to anybody who's paying attention, who's any perspective on these statistics. Although I, I know we will probably not have the clear, clear numbers on the cure is worse than the disease until... We get a few more months of hindsight, but I guarantee you that that's going to be the case. Anybody taking an honest look at the statistics today, scaling back the government fear mongering numbers appropriately. And by the way, Donald Trump, I mean, look at him, look at him cower in the face of this false narrative. Instead of standing his ground on taking a reasonable perspective on the virus, what has he done? He has been so cowered by the mainstream media by the fear mongers that he has turned around and done a 180 and said look how good i am at responding with government to this crisis look at these shutdowns the shutdowns don't work and they're wrong donald trump did not drain the swamp the swamp drained him and it is using him now and the fear of the coronavirus to keep the american people complacent enough to allow for six trillion dollars of liquidity to be injected into the markets so the rich get richer and the poor get poor as the story always goes where we are now is a turning point whether we're going to continue to accept this hoax or not the idea of shutdowns at this point there's just there's no justification for it. the curve has been flattened 
There are no overwhelmed hospital wards. That's not a thing. They said it was going to be a thing. Didn't materialize. Thank you. Hashtag film your hospital. Plenty of controversy and trolls, both sides of that. But that Americans were able to pay attention and, sh- and, and just have this common awareness. No, this is nonsense. Don't let them do this. Please don't. They have to respect our freedom. The freedom to set risk levels for ourselves. There's no overwhelming risk. There's no, I'm going to infect you because you're forced to be exposed to me. I can't go out and go to work at a place of business that says this is an open. We can't set our own policies. If you you don't want to come, you're afraid that tourists in your town are going to touch a surface where the virus might survive for up to three days. And now you, well, okay. So you get your grocery store, locals only, if that's what you want in your community. Please, please, please don't turn to the federal government. Don't turn to your state government for protection. The unintended consequences are obviously they're going to make it so much worse. Everybody now knows that there's a greater expectation of, of distancing, of physical distancing, of better hygiene. If you want to be afraid, you have the right to be afraid. If you want to be cautious, you have the right to be cautious. You do not have the right to force your standards of caution on someone else. I don't have the right to force my recklessness on you, on your private property, in your business, you set the standard. But you don't have the right to force, I mean, no politician does. And once we give that up, that's a basic human right to set your own level of risk. We let government determine that, really? And all of this is exposing our vulnerability for being a bubble-wrapped culture, the nerf the world, obsession with safety, protect the children, but the safety first. Really? It can go too far. And I've covered this. Like, I, I've, I've been railing on this as just part of my message with Adam versus the man for years that we don't have a, a realistic way of looking at risk reward in just basic decision making skills. People say that I'm brave for what I do. And it's like, no, I just, I don't, I've, I've thought my way out of the fear. That's what I want people to have. I want you to be able to think for yourself and say, no, this is bullshit. I do not have to put up with this crap anymore. So I urge you for the sake of freedom, for the sake of humanity, for the sake of justice, for the sake of the future of this country and the world we want to leave for our children, do not allow yourself to be manipulated by fear. Do what it takes to stand up in whatever way you can. These restrictions are bullshit from top to bottom, but not only that, they are unenforceable. Make it as hard as possible for your government, wherever you are in the world, to enforce laws based on violating your rights. And now the excuses are so easy. All you need is a note from your grandma here in the United States to say, oh, I'm doing something essential. I'm bringing food to someone who has to be in isolation. Don't be violent. Don't be confrontational. You don't have to. You can carry weapons peacefully if you need to make that appropriate show of force as part of your message. But never give up the moral high ground, the intellectual high ground, and the high ground of good humor. Because it's the only thing they don't know how to deal with. If you are afraid, they can bully you into submission. If you are angry, They can beat you down. But if you laugh at them and you laugh them into irrelevant, there's nothing they can do about it. And today is Friday, May 15th, 2020. Welcome to Adam vs. The Man. Join us in studio. Comment Jim Freedom. Mr. Freedom. How you doing? How's it going on the uh, on the forums on the chats here this morning? It's going. People are already having their own conversation again on YouTube, as always. Uh, people are checking in on Facebook as well, so that's been excellent. Rainbow Jones, as you were talking, said the only time I ever had the flu was right after I had a flu shot. 
imagine that. <sighs> yeah, I mean, the forced vaccinations, did, 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 should I have included that in my opening? I mean, real, like, do I need, does it go without saying with all of that? Like, is that the, like, I'm, we, we have a better line, like, I have my lines in the sand. I have my militaristic analogies here. But, you know, if we have a fallback position, it's forced vaccination. Like, no fucking way. Right. No compromise. I I, I, it, I I will die on that hill. Like, and I don't say that lightly. I, I'm happy to retreat from a lot of ills. Forced vaccinations? No. I'll die on that hill. Absolutely. It, it, to protect others from being vaccinated, right. even if the risk yeah. to me is insignificant. Right. No, you're not putting something in my body without my consent. And I think, I think that's... I think yeah, or or any any human being. I, I mean, I, I would I would stand in the way of any needle, <laughs> you know. Like I, yeah, that that is a hill, absolutely with, worth dying on. We have to fight now so that it doesn't come to that. And they're 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 creeping towards that, and it it is a really scary time to be alive, but it is a really important time to laugh back and fight back with a smile on your face. <laughs>